welcome back to another edition of Rambling On Reviews and uh, no funny introduction this week I'm afraid because did you not get round to writing anything? <laughs> no, no, not at all. This is just, it's, you know, there's, there's a lot of serious subject matter on this album and I didn't think it warranted a, a comedic sort of an intro. You didn't write anything, did you? No, it's just, you know, it, 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 you didn't write anything again. No, I did, I was just going to no. Why didn't you write anything? I mean, it's, it's, you know, why didn't you write anything? Well, I mean, <laughs> why didn't you write anything? Well, uh, why didn't you write anything? I've got hemorrhoids. Yeah, so you're happy? Do the review, mate, do the review. Chelsea Wolf is back with Birth of Violence. Why would that stop him writing anything? So welcome back fair viewer, I hope you enjoyed my hilarious introduction. Many of you seem to be enjoying those nowadays as I just exploit myself essentially. First of all if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe, make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you check that bell icon thing so you get notifications. And hey if you feel so inclined why not check out my second channel, Free To Be Positive, a channel basically where a depressed mind tries to make sense of this world. So, Chelsea Wolfe with Birth of Violence. This is the follow-up to 2017's His Spun, which made it to my number two spot of albums of the year of said year. And unlike the previous couple of albums, which had much more of an industrial gothic element to them, this album is much more in the folk vein of things, much more stripped down and uh, acoustic. Apologies as well for the lateness of this review. I'm well aware that the album came out last week, but uh, I wasn't able to get the time to do it, unfortunately. But I was determined to get a review out for this album because Chelsea Wolfe is, without a doubt, one of my favourite female artists. Just to give you a bit of context in the album, I just want to read out a few things that Chelsea had to say about it. This album is about the power of women and navigating the world as a woman, but also it's about finding a sense of home no matter what's happening around us. But as I was taking a break after eight years on the road, finally I started saying no to things. As soon as I got back from tour last December, I started setting up a home studio in my house in Northern California and settling in. That probably explains why things sound calmer. This album was made in a much more intimate way for me. So Chelsea mentioning there, a couple of things that recur on the album. So looking at life from the perspective of a woman and also um, another recurring theme on the album is the road, the call of the road, being on the road, maybe standing by the road. Speaking of road, let's go to the first track on the album, The Mother Road. I've actually already done a standalone video for this song, so I urge you to go and check that out. Good song, good start to the album. I'm not repeating myself. So let's get on to the second track, American Darkness. I got a very strong Portishead vibe on this song, as is much of the album, but with that unmistakable Chelsea Wolfe vocal. So angelic yet haunted. So introverted yet expressive. So chalk yet cheese. Overreached there a bit, didn't you? Got a bit overconfident with the juxtaposition and that, didn't you? Juxtapositions and that, yeah. You'll be all right, I don't think anyone noticed. Chelsea had this to say about the song. While writing American Darkness, I had an old film scene of a war widow in my head, alone in her cabin, dancing with the ghost of her lost partner, overtaken by loneliness and isolation. This song has that real beautiful, yet melancholic, that was fine but don't overdo it, folk-like quality to it, and the imagery that's conjured up through the lyrics is quite vivid. Your eye was trained on me as I stood before you, unbuttoning. If it was a man saying that, it'd be very creepy. Kiss me as the bell tolls, swiftly as the horses ride. Stunning song. Next up we have the title track itself, Birth of Violence. Starts out with this electronic noise loop before an acoustic riff kicks in that has some real attitude to it. Kind of had a bit of a mix of that uh, outlaw country vibe along with Sweet Jane by the Cowboy Junkies and I also got a hint of Rocky Erickson for some reason. I actually did a Google search about that afterwards and found that Chelsea had recently done a cover of Night of the Vampire shortly after his death. She's clearly a fan. I enjoyed this song very much. Next up we have Deranged for Rock and Roll. Starts out with a particularly high vocal line. I'm deranged for rock and roll. God likes a trier, but that was truly awful. Before our first real hint of some distorted feedback and some industrial-esque, though organic at the same time, drums that permeate the entirety of the track and complement the acoustic guitar perfectly. I guess this one acknowledges that uh, music has always been a huge part of Chelsea's life and most likely always will be. Starlet, big mood. Don't get me started. This ain't the life I chose. It was waiting there for me to call. Now I'm on this train, I hear it rolling on. I'm not on a train. Just a quick break here as it's a 
particularly warm in my fine Isle of England, I'm shy today. That was nothing to do with the review. Next up we have Be All Things. It starts out with this beautiful finger-picked acoustic guitar, but later on in the song we get this more epic feel as uh, some strings build into it, much like um, Simon and Garfunkel's The Boxer. One of my favourite songs of S&G. Warriors, newborns and queens. The lion and the wolf. Gnarling at eternal sleep. Let it burn, hear it groan. Restrained desire, cast it down. Chelsea had this to say for herself regarding the song. Be All Things is about navigating the world as a woman, reconciling the soft and the strong, balancing the warrior and the goddess, and wanting to be everything and nothing at the same time. Yeah, this one was one of my favourites on the album. Stunning. Next up we have Erde. I think in German this means earth or dirt. This is one of the bleakest sounding songs on the album, and uh, I suppose that's quite appropriate. This one definitely talking about um, our impact on the earth, and what we're doing to the planet, and how uh, Basically, if the Earth did decide to fight back, we'd be fucked. As reflected in lines like, Waves of destruction. Or, I dreamt of buildings long left behind. I guess this one's an ode to old Mother Earth herself. From the vales of Eden to the swelling tide. We cried together, Erde. Woman is the origin. Bit arrogant. The outro to this song as well had a real industrial tinge to it, which really added to the sense of dread. Cool tune. Next up, when anger turns to honey. This song addresses, among other things, the worst scum on the planet, the internet troll. Though to be fair, Ms. Wolf's take on it was much more eloquent and probably more understanding than my primitive translation. She had this to say, at the end of the day, I can understand that someone who is really angry and acting out with insults and mean comments or whatever, this is just a small example obviously, but those people are probably just in pain and something is going on in their own life that they're not understanding or they're not satisfied with. And that does connect us because I understand what that's like as well. I'm not always satisfied with myself or own life either, and I'm really hard on myself. I choose to deal with that by writing music and trying to transmute it into something positive. Oh. Strangely, it's really easy to feel alone, especially in the era of social media. I really enjoyed the lyrics in this one, particularly lines like, because people sure got a lot to say until they're standing right in front of you. Or even, when anger turns to honey, title of the song. In moments like this, I can understand you. For pain is the great connector. Good song, but uh, trolls are scum. They're just scum. Next up we have Dirt Universe. This is another one that had a very strong Portishead vibe going on. The lyrics on this one are far more autobiographical and uh, confessional, I think. On his spun, she dug deep into a lot of things that happened to her in childhood, and uh, this seems to be a continuation of that. And I read this in a recent interview with Fader.com. That song was also a bit autobiographical, just accepting my role as this conduit of some heavy energy and trying to transmute that into something more positive while remaining honest about it. The chorus goes thusly. I sedated myself just to be close to you. I am the daughter of sorrow. Keep looking, you're gonna find me. Teeth ready, sharp, snarling. Oh, I'm waiting. A beautiful but very heavy song. Speaking of heavy songs, the next track is Little Grave. A very folk-like song, this one, with finger-picked acoustic guitar, Chelsea's haunted vocals, and the lyrical content addresses school shootings. Touch not ye, my little grave, for mama is now far away. They lay me there, and there I lay. You can't fight guns with guns. We'll all perish that way. The song builds in intensity as we get to the bridge section, with ambient keyboards added and uh, stacked vocal lines from Chelsea as she repeats the line, and the blue dreams keep on calling me. Like all good folk music, this one deals with stories of our time, no matter how dark they may be. Next song is Preface for a Dream Play. A piano-led piece that seems to have a melding of the Halloween theme song and a child's nursery rhyme gives it this really eerie, sinister edge. Thanks. Unlike this. Well, that couldn't have been less sinister, could it? There's a real dreamlike quality to this song. Lyrically, it seems to be talking about the passing of time. I could almost imagine this as like an Edgar Allan Poe or H.P. Lovecraft piece. Preface to a dream play. Time and space do not exist here, and everything is possible. Throw a spear into the unknown. The clock hands begin to melt away, replaced by the marching of your army. The final words of the song is a repeating of the line, hell is on earth. Cheery stuff. Next up we have Highway, and much like the Mother Road, this one seems to be addressing life on the road, or the calling of the road, if you will. Houses of the holy, whispers of the lonely. You just can't seem to keep me off this lost highway. 
Can't seem to keep me off these fucking hills. This song was pretty much the close to the album as The Storm. The actual last track on the album is literally an audio recording of a thunderstorm. Perhaps a sign of what's to come or perhaps symbolising what has been. Don't try and get clever again, mate. We're nearly done with the review. So that's the album, and I'd give it an eight out of 10. While not as immediate as some of her past offerings, it's still a very atmospheric and engaging listen. The more stripped down acoustic elements of the album may not appeal to fans of her heavier material, but Chelsea's voice is stunning as always, and the lyrical content is powerful and thought provoking. This is one of those albums that delivers more and more with each listen and proof, if proof be needed, of just what an amazing songwriter and performer Chelsea Wolfe truly is. You're done now are you? I think so, I was quite happy with that outro. It's just it was quite well thought out and written, I just don't quite understand why you couldn't have done the intro. <clears throat> there you go, that's the review. Chelsea Wolf, Birth of Violence, very very good album indeed, highly recommended. And if you do prefer some of the heavier stuff then definitely check out either Abyss or His Spun. Abyss would be my uh, first port call to be honest, amazing album. But yeah, it's Chelsea Wolf, fantastic album, said that already, twice I think, maybe even three times. So what about next? Well, I was hoping to do a review of the latest Liam Gallagher album, but uh, I just don't know if I'm going to get a chance, to be honest with you. So I might just um, forgo that and wait until next week for Opeth with their new album. What else have we got? Hell Yeah are releasing a new album. And Steel Panther I might give that a go as well. Why not? Some comedy. Laughing is nice, I suppose. There are people following me now. Fantastic. So there we go. Done. Bye. See you later. Whatever. Blah, blah, blah.